Hello, screenwriters, and welcome to Writing for Screens, Screenwriting Step-by-Step, Step, number 15. I've changed the title of this uh, regular series of uh, live streams because no one knew what the other one was about, and I wanted more people to see it. So, hey, hope you're doing well. It's Monday. I am here pretty much every Monday through Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, where I'm going to be working on a pilot script from rough idea to hopefully a full script. We'll see how far it goes. And in the meantime, I'm also here to answer questions. You can ask me anything, almost. Uh, let's, someone asked me a question um, in, hmm, are we live? Yes, I think we are live. Um, sorry, confused for a second. Someone already asked me a fabulous question, so I'm actually going to start with that. Um, uh, in the comments of an earlier episode, B. Izzy mentioned, you talk about a second story going on at the same time. How do you do that and tie it to the main story? This is a super excellent question because B stories are a major part of, of any good script, pretty much. Um, but it also reminded me that I've set myself a difficult and personal challenge on this project, which is not normal and may not be good for teaching or for any of us. So I'm going to get into that. Um, but right now I want to talk about uh, B stories, just very briefly. A B story is uh, a sort of second story, supporting story uh, to your main story. Um, in theory, you could have a C story and a D story as well, but uh, the concept of a B story tends to be supporting people um, dealing in some way in a relationship to the main story. In other words, uh, very often they are helpers, uh, mentors, uh, advisors, assistants, pals, um, or sometimes they can be antagonists, minor antagonists, not the main one. Um, but they also sometimes you'll have a story which is sort of a variation. For instance, the hero's best friend is also in love, but their love is going very differently than the main character. It's a chance to show an alternate approach to whatever the theme or the main story is. Um, you also can sometimes use it in contrast um, to say, while this is one version, there's a whole other version of this question. You, you may have a story about love needing honesty, and then in another, uh, in their B story, there's somebody who's doing really well for themselves by living a, a fantasy life and, and sticking with their illusions. Uh, whatever the B story is, it should in some way uh, relate to this, the main story, although it can sometimes be very different, a relief from. For instance, if there's a, a, a war movie, uh, there could be a B story in it about a, a, a fighter who falls in love with a local resident, and it's a love story within a war story. That would, could be a B story. Um, the interesting thing about this is the concept that there is a central story that you have made a choice and said, this is my main story. And now within that, I'm going to weave in a secondary story. Obviously, secondary, it means you're going to spend less time, give a little less depth or complexity, maybe make it a little stronger. Not necessarily less depth in the sense that it, uh, a short story can often be very deep and powerful, but you're going to have less detail to it, less steps in the story. Um, because it can't take over. Whatever is taking up the main amount of time is your A story, whether you want it to be or not. If you're giving all your time to something, that's your A story. Um, I didn't do any graphics for this. Sorry about that. But what it does bring me to is this particular tale that I am working on here are... Um, hold on, let's see. Uh, just to get ourselves here to the uh, notes and overview of our untitled podcaster killer story. Uh, I started out with calling this a romantic comedy thriller. 
Um, and, and in my original notes, I said to myself, I want this to be a romantic comedy in the form of a thriller, because that was a personal challenge to me, because honestly, I've written a lot of scripts in my life. I don't uh, find much challenge in writing a simple script. Um, and so when I, when I work on any project, part of me is saying, what will personally keep me engaged? What makes it worth it to me to do this? Even if no one ever sees it, no one ever likes it, uh, if it fails utterly, I want to be sure that I had a reason to do it other than pleasing other people. Um, and uh, early on, sometimes that could be, I just want to get a script done. I just want to make sense. I just want to tell a story. When you've done 30 or 40, uh, you begin to give yourself more specific challenges. I want to do uh, something that relies on dialogue, or I want to do something that's set in a culture I don't know. Whatever it is going to be, in my personal case, I said, I want to try and do a romantic comedy in the form of a thriller. I like genre blending. I like genre bending. But as a result of that, I'm sort of getting mixed up sometimes while I am working on my outline of what story I'm exactly telling. Um, I've got this love story, which is the question of how... Norman and Madeline overcome their personal obstacles to love with each other. That's the love story, the romantic comedy. Um, and there are genre expectations of a romantic comedy. Um, but at the same time, I set myself this uh, group of people solving a murder mystery with a serial killer coming after them thriller. And so I keep on sort of bopping back and forth wherever I'm making progress, that's where I go. If I'm making progress on the romantic character love story, then I explore that for a while. If I'm work doing, getting good ideas on the thriller, I'm like, oh, cool, that's what I'm working on. But I haven't yet resolved how I am going to pull off this mystical romantic comedy thriller thing. Um, and when it really comes down to it, you have to make a choice. You have to say, this is the model I am using. A romantic comedy model focuses on the emotional interplay between the main characters. A thriller focuses on the plot mechanics of a threat and resolving it. So therefore, I've got to decide which one is top. Not that I can't do both, but one of them is going to be the final say. Uh, we've got some. We've got some people online. I'm very glad. Uh, Wolf Powers is here. Hello, Wolf. Um, and uh, anybody else who's here who wants to chime in and say hello, please feel free in the chat. Um, you can also always reach me, by the way, through. Uh, sorry. Uh, writingforscreens.com is how you can, if, if you are watching this not live, if you are alive and yet I am on uh, some kind of recording, you can still ask me a question. Just go to writingforscreens.com. That's a good way to reach me. Um, also, as we have seen today, um, you can get me in the comments of uh, any of my YouTube videos. I see them all. Starcrossed, how you doing? Nice to see you. I'm so glad to have people here. Uh, this is really fab. Um, so what we're talking about is uh, A, the question of B stories. A, the question of B stories. Number one, the question of B stories. Um, but also how uh, when you have more than one story element, eventually something has got to become the A story, the main story, the one you are saying, this above all is my story. Um, and what I, I realized is I haven't made that choice yet. And um, one of the ways that you make that choice is by deciding, first of all, personally, what do you feel like? You're going to have to live with this for a long time. It takes a few months to write a script normally. Um, a Writer's Guild contract gives you two or three months um, to write a, a feature script. Um, uh, it can often take you a year or two to really figure out what it is you're trying to, to, to write, especially if you're writing part-time or interrupting one project with another. 
So one of the main reasons to choose a story is I can come back to this story again and again over time, and I'm interested in it. Um, if you're not interested, it's going to be very hard to make it interesting for other people. And if you're not interested, it's going to be really hard to get yourself to sit down and push through all the many steps of writing a large project. Um, so the question is, for me, what's the thing I want to do most? I don't know. I'm not sure yet. And so I'm actually not going to come to a resolution on this question here. Um, but I also have another issue here. I am doing this to teach you guys. I am doing this to make a series of videos in which I will be instructing someone or exemplifying mm -hmm. uh, how you write a script. And so therefore, the purpose of this script should be to make that good, to make that easy, to make that comprehensible. Um, and therefore, my personal need to challenge myself to go places I have never been may not be the most important thing for this project. Um, on the other hand, you're going to learn a lot by watching me wrestle. So these are the elements of having more than one story in this particular case that I'm working on. Um, I don't know yet. It's going to, it might take a few weeks to figure this out. I really don't know. What's really important is to raise the question. And so that is what I'm going to do here. Is this first a rom-com? or a thriller? That's a big, big question. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make it bigger. <laughs> I do this sometimes just to sort of get my own attention. I make it big so that every time I look at this page, I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, okay, I got it. Oh, you didn't see that. Here. I made it big. <laughs> I made this big. And you know what? I'm even going to, I'm even going to make it a hold on there. Let's go really crazy. I'm going to make it really, really hard to forget. Um, all right. So this is a question I do not yet know the answer to. I'm, like I said, I'm working some on uh, one angle, the rom-com angle. I get ideas for it. I get into that. I can see it. And then other sides, I'm like, oh, I think this could be a really cool thriller. I don't know which one it is yet. Um, I am going to keep the question in my mind, but just go on working on the different elements until one day much of writing happens when you're not sitting at this, the desk. You ask yourself the question and your brain processes it. And like two days later, you'll suddenly be shopping and in the middle of the supermarket and you'll go, yeah, this is a romantic comedy. I just am sure I'm just going to stick it. And it just happens. So uh, that is where we are with that. Now let's get to the notes because uh, the other day, over the weekend, while I was washing dishes, as I said, much of your writing happens when you're not writing. Once you get yourself into the, the, the mindset, it just keeps on cooking. And you never know when something in your life, which is a great place to find material, will provoke something. Now, this, has, this bit of dialogue has nothing to do with washing dishes. I don't even know why. I guess I was just thinking about Norman and his journalism topic, and the fact that Zach is, thinks of himself as a journalist but isn't one, uh, in Norman's opinion, and an exchange of dialogue came to me. Now, it's, it's pretty long, actually. Um, and actually, I'll have to say, I believe I built it up. But let me see if I... Okay, I'm going to copy this. And what you do is, if you think of something... This is, this is important. Let's get a, let's get a close-up here. If you think of something, a bunch of dialogue, a description, a bit of action, while you are writing the outline, while you are figuring out the story, write it down, okay? Grab it, type it, uh, write it on a napkin or put it into your phone, and then when you get a chance, type it into your documents so that you do not lose it. Um, I am now going to put it in the outline. I'm going to just make it its own scene. I'm going to say uh, here, Norman and Zach discuss journalism. That is now a scene. And I put into it 
this hunk of dialogue that I thought of. Um, and now I'll read it to you. Norman, do you even know what a journalist does? Zach, of course I do. Journalism. What is the job of a journalist? To report the story, speak truth to power, take down the hypocrites. A, a journalist discerns. Hell yeah. Do you know what discern means? To tell. To tell the, the, the difference. Difference. To tell the difference. Hell yeah. Between truth and lies, spin and substance, to weigh, to ascertain, to compare, compile, decide. It is a massing, massive, demanding, exceptional responsibility. I love this shit, for real. Now, the purpose of this dialogue, and the reason I read it, is because this is essentially one exchange. It's one beat. It's one gag, which is Norman is so pissed off at Zach for his obliviousness about the thing that Norman has devoted his life to that he is trying to push him to recognize that he doesn't know what the heck he's talking about. But Zach, because he is apparently naive and, and uh, oblivious, um, he just keeps going, yeah, man, yeah, tell me. And he's misunderstanding with every step. Um, it just came to me as a idea. Oh, yeah, man, I get it. Cool. And when he says what he says, it's never what Norman wants him to know. So the thing about this is that it's an opportunity dramatically for me to define Norman's beliefs. That's what this is. Norman is speaking his beliefs but I've put it into a funny scene where he's getting more Aaron Sorkin-like with every step of the way, and Zach is just not getting it. Um, so that's uh, that's what I got. And honestly, it, it didn't come quite this easily. It didn't come. It, it came basically. I mean, the line uh, "I love this shit for real" came quickly. The "Do you know what a journalist does?" came, and then. Um, all the details, like I knew that Zach, Zach was going to say like uh, to something and it's going to be sort of the the middle school answer. <laughs> Zach is not really sophisticated yet. And um, and so then I had to think, well, what what would Norman say? What do I believe Norman believes about this thing he has devoted his life to? By the way, that's another good one. You spend a lot of time saying what do I believe the character believes? Um, it doesn't have to be what I believe. I don't have to, I, I hopefully can get behind it somewhat, but you are not writing directly from you to the audience. You are writing what the character believes in talking and engaging with the other characters. So in this case, I rather like Norman's beliefs, but I also understand Zach's idea that you can't just have a bunch of uh, specialized people doing this reporting. Both good arguments. Over the course of time, I think they'll both show up in the script. Right here, this is about Norman being just so frustrated. That's the scene. So I wrote it down. Now it's in here. Um, it's in the outline. Your outline can stretch and expand. Eventually, you'll start to put it into a document which is called the text. This one. I haven't really started that one yet, but when I do, I'm just going to be able to cut and paste this stuff in there. All right. Um, so let us look at what else I got in the notes, because I got a lot of notes over this weekend. Uh, more. Oh, here's the other thing. I, um, I When you write dialogue, you do steps. You, you start with, like I started with um, Norman saying, uh, between truth and, and I, I wrote it down so I didn't lose it for you, between truth and bullshit, not between truth and lies, um, because I, I wanted Z Norman to have more of a voice of, of like pissed off, cranky old man. Um, but then I got to between truth and lies because while truth and bullshit sounded right for his voice, it was, it was actually, this was a moment when I wanted him to speak better than he really can. Um, so that the audience can get a little bit inspired by him. Um, also, because the higher Norman goes with his um, the, the beauty of his rhetoric, 
the funnier it is that Zach is just not getting it. Um, and then the other thing is in this, I, I had two, uh, two way to ascertain, to get like a, a series of verbs talking about the job, the task. My first version of that, it was all two, to ascertain, to compile, to compare. After a while, when I said it out loud, because I did, I said, I read, I said this to myself, and I thought, it's too many twos that you're losing the words. To ascertain, to compare, compile, decide. By, by taking out some of those twos, I gave it more of a rhythm. It's just a little dialogue lesson way before we get to dialogue, but it comes up. So there we go. Um, then I gave a, a little lecture to myself this, that afternoon. It's fun to gather these bits, but I do not know what the story is. That same question I was talking about before. Uh, so I, I started to work on the romantic story and I thought, what's getting between? I ask myself questions. It's always a process of questions and answers. Um, and and yeah, I don't have a graphic of this here, but let me just ask you, if you get a chance, watch my video called A Process of Questions. That is the process that you're seeing here. I'm asking myself a question like, well, what if what's wrong is that he objectifies women? He's an old guy, he's from the old school, and maybe he doesn't really recognize that he is not seeing these people as people. Um, and I thought that was sort of interesting because if you want someone to change, you have to start them in a bad place. <laughs> you have to start them in the place that they're going to change from. And it would be a cool story to talk about this issue because it's a current issue that is well worth getting into. Um, and not just in a scolding way, but in a, this person needs to learn. Um, the problem though, I realized was if he has spent his entire life objectifying women, um, he's not going to stop. He's not going to, no, no matter how much he might say, ah, at last I recognize you as a woman. I just didn't believe that she could believe he would stop. In the long run, he would see the next one and it would lure him. It was, it was tough. I just, I just didn't buy it. I didn't buy that it could come to a happy enough, happy ending for this kind of thing. Um, which is, is too bad because I thought it would be a cool thing if his argument was, hey, I've been a terrible person. I've been a dog. I've, I've just slept with everything that moves. But now you can trust that you're special to me because I'm choosing you having done that. And I thought that is both a incredibly romantic ar argument, if true, but also the exact argument that a jerk would use if lying to himself or her. So I said, no, no to that. Ask yourself a question, try it out. Um, and then I thought, what if this is um, about people who are um, not necessarily looking for a sexual partner, but more for comfort? Um, the idea that, that at a certain age they've reached, they've like been there, done that. What I really want is someone I can talk to, someone I can trust, someone who I can partner with. Um, and yes, that is a good story. I don't think it fits with the urgency that this is a romantic comedy needs of, um, because we're also doing the thriller and all this other stuff. It's, there isn't time to slow down and enjoy the, the lessons of exploring some, a couple who is trying to find a, a, a non-sexual or secondary sexual relationship. It just didn't feel like it fit this story. Very often, you'll come up with an idea that's really good. Um, it's like, wow, I would love to write that story. I would love to see that story. That story doesn't fit this project. Um, and, and yeah, once again, it's like, I thought, what about sharing cooking? Or you know, there's all these things. She's trying to change herself and her, her life is all, everything physical is weighed with romance, but unspoken. Um, so I said, good idea, good thing for the scrap pile. Let me just briefly, I'm working on a video about this. Briefly, 
make a scrap pile, make a place where you just throw every good idea you can't use right now. Every character you think of, every observation you make, you're in a restaurant, you see a couple and they have a bizarre fight and you think, oh, wouldn't it be funny if at the end, you know, the, the waiter goes off with one of them or something. Whatever it is that comes into your head, write it down and put it in a safe place. I call it my scrap pile. Um, and then I thought, as I, as I often do when I'm brainstorming, one thing doesn't work, try the opposite. So I thought, well, if this is about people who are not working towards the great lovemaking, what if every single episode they make love and it's all about them being really open about, hey, you know, that didn't work out and this part didn't work out and this was good. And this was, like they're, they're very calm about it. They're very uh, con communicative about sex so that it's sort of like a project between them, a casual, a hobby. Um, and I thought that might be fun. Um, two veterans who can be honest with each other. Because one of the things is, this is a story about two older people falling in love. So at the moment, that's a possibility. Um, I'm just not sure yet, so I'm going to take a couple of these and I'm going to drop them into the outline um, up here at the beginning who are they? What is this about? Um, and I'm just going to drop them in here to consider later. I'm going to put it here. I'm going to make it detailed. So I'm going to put it in italics because I just don't know yet. All right. Um, so that was good. And I just want to see what else we got here because there was a lot. Oh, yeah, this is a cool idea. All right. Um, the other day, we're getting tired. Look at this. Here, look at this for a second. Um, the other day, I was talking about how you choose certain key locations for any project. Um, almost every project will have at least one or two key locations, sometimes more, but, uh, and it's, it's not that they're necessarily uh, going to be used all the time, but they just have a weight to the story, that they are, um, they are either emotionally weighty or they're, they're meaningful in the story, like Hogwarts. <laughs> um, in, um, hello, James. Good to see you. Glad you're here. Um, I was saying that sometimes locations will have a, a, a power. For instance, like I said, Hogwarts. You, you know you're going there, that, that that's where the school of magic stuff happens. It's like the center of those stories, but it's not the only place. They leave. They go to other places. Um, so I was thinking about this house. The, the house that we're working with, I determined, is, the, um, is George's, her ex-husband's, house. He has died. She has inherited it. Um, she has not seen him in a long time, but he's had a crappy, lonely life, and she is his closest uh, near relative. His uh... Anyway, she's now got this house to deal with, and as she's dealing with his files and stuff in his house, that is bringing the serial killer hunters to her because they want that stuff, and it's in that house. So there's a lot going on in that house. And I thought, what if this house is actually the main location of this series? Um, it's a risky choice. Usually um, a series, they, get, they want to move around a lot. They don't want to feel too um, location bound because you're spending a lot of hours in, in a series and you don't want to feel restless. But I thought it's a limited series. We're going to do other stuff. But I think that this house is the center of this story, like the Hogwarts of, of this story. Um, it's good for your budget if you are working low budget to have relatively few locations. Um, and also, I, I when I was young, I wrote a lot of plays. Um, at a certain point, it was technically too difficult for me to write movies back in the 19... Uh, 70s and 80s, the technology was not there for you to be able to shoot your own movies. So um, I ended up doing plays, which I also loved. Um, as a result, I got a kind of 
playwright's mentality lurking in the back of my mind here. And I thought this it might be a cool place to explore that, to give people rooms to talk in, but have uh, a sense of, of character and drama uh, in a theater-like way within this, sh this show. Uh, am I saying this is a great idea for you guys to do all the time? No, but you're not writing this. You're just learning from me. I got to do what feels good for me to be able to keep working on this for months ahead of me. Um, and one of the ways I do that is I, like I said, I give myself a small personal challenge. Instead of making this a jump all over North by Northwest traveling thriller, this is going to be a thing where all these different people are coming into this location. That is decided. That is not even going to be a question. Um, I just like it. So I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to format it later so that you don't have to waste your time watching. Um, and I'm going to say we've done a half an hour. I think it's time to stop for today. It has been uh, a lot of fun. I love that you guys are here with me live, and I am thrilled about all of you who cannot be here live but are actually sitting through these things as videos. Cool and groovy. Please do ask me questions or give me comments about what you think we're doing um, or what you want to know. In the meantime, this has been Writing for Screens, screenwriting step-by-step. Take care.